Hi everyone, this is JJ with ASUS, and today we're gonna to be talking about overclocking, specifically overclocking on AMD's latest generation Ryzen 2 series processors. And of course, we're gonna be giving you the ins and outs of how to be able to go ahead and easily and effectively, and with stability, overclock your processor on your latest ASUS X470 series motherboard. So regardless of whether you got a Prime series board, a Tough series board, a Strict series motherboard, or of course, an ROG series motherboard, we're gonna give you the ins and outs of how you take your Ryzen 2 to the next level. So before we jump into all the specifics in terms of the overclocking, there are a couple of things that we do wanna go over. We previously made an overclocking video that dived in deeply into a lot of the different tenets that are important to understand in terms of overclocking, especially in regards to the theory, uh, stability, CPUs, uh, cooling, a lot of different variables. And I'd strongly recommend that you guys check out that previous video, which we'll link in the description below. Now, while it covers the first generation Ryzen series processor, as well as the X370 chipset, the vast majority of the information will still be entirely relevant uh, for this current generation CPU and this current generation chipset. So with all of that noted, now of course here, we've reached the part that I'm sure probably most of you are interested in, and that's gonna be the CPU overclocking. So on our ASU series of motherboards, uh, specifically for the Prime series, the Strict series, and the ROG series of motherboards, you're gonna essentially have two options that are available to you. You'll have an automatic option uh, within our operating system that's part of our five-way optimization suite that's called auto-tuning, and you'll then have the traditional classic option that's referred to as manual overclocking, which is inside the UEFI BIOS, and this would also be a available to you on our tough series of motherboards. Um, fundamentally, what is the difference? They're actually both essentially the same. They will both overclock your system, but one can be significantly more time consuming and complicated than the other. Our auto tuning technology, while it is executed within the operating system through software, it is actually working directly through a firmware level. That means it's actually talking directly to the motherboard, making all the adjustments in real time, just like you would be making those adjustments if you were manually doing it in the UEFI. The advantage that you have is a simplified user interface with essentially automation built into it. It will automatically essentially track the frequency, make adjustments to the voltages, um, allow you to go ahead and see information such as the wattage, the temperature, and you can go ahead and customize things like your stress test duration um, and how much memory you want to be able to have stress tested and many other variables. Uh, I'd say for 80% of users out there, this is going to be the preferred option and this is what we're going to first go ahead and show you in terms of an overclocking uh, guide. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the auto overclocking process. So it's pretty straightforward. Once you've gone ahead and completed your installation of Windows 10, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to install the latest version of AI Suite 3. You can download the latest version from support.asus.com as well as you can utilize the new Asus Grid software to make sure you have the latest UEFI and the latest version of AI Suite 3. Now once it's installed, you wanna head over to the system tray double click on the icon and open it up. Now, once you open it up, you'll see this primary system interface and you'll see a tab that says five optimization. This is what will allow you to leverage the integrated auto overclocking or auto tuning technology. Now there's a lot of different things you can do in five optimization, including one touch options for fan calibration and profiling via fan expert four. You can make a application uh, overclock based uh, setup, which is really cool and really interesting via turbo app. And you can do a whole lot of other options, but here let's focus on automatic overclocking. So we're gonna click on the actual five optimization tab and this will take us into the option menu. Now, if you want to simply and easily effectively overclock your system, you could literally just click the start button and you would be off to the races. You wouldn't have to make any type of adjustments. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and give you a little bit of insight so that you can go ahead and tailor your overclock more specific to your different types of wants or needs or your overall workflow or your type of uh, gaming type of focus on your system. So here at the top, you'll see that there's a button that says extreme tuning, it's gone ahead and already been pre-selected. Essentially what this means is that the auto overclocking process will happen in two stages. One where it initially will go ahead and apply a baseline four gigahertz overclock. And once it's gone ahead to find that four gigahertz overclock, it will attempt to automatically keep increasing the frequency at about 25 megahertz increments to see where it ultimately will stop at, or whether that's gonna be limited by your CPU, your cooling, a combination of them, or any of the other elements of your overall build. Uh, this is a great option to really let you maximize uh, the performance of your build as a whole. Now, the second option right here is gonna be the stress test distribution. This essentially is the balance of how much is being stress tested in terms of the CPU 
in addition with the memory. And so ideally we wanna stress test both the system memory and the DRAM. This is important in terms of really making sure that you have a high level of system stability. Um, most users generally average between about 20 to 40% of memory utilization. More demanding users are probably between about 40 to 60%. And the most demanding users, especially let's say streamers, uh, content creators, uh, gamers that, that are, run a lot of multitasking in the background are using you know between 60 to almost 100% worth of memory. Um, I generally recommend to go ahead and fully set this over to the maximum so that you get a great balance in terms of fully stress testing your CPU and your memory. Now directly below that, you're gonna have the stress test duration. This can be customized all the way up to an entire hour. Now by default, it's at 50 seconds. And 15 seconds we've found is uh, very, very good. And probably about 75% of cases, this will give you a stable and reliable overclock while being extremely quick. Um, if you wanna be able to go ahead and add in just a little bit more in terms of the overall stress test uh, duration to be able to go ahead and increase the total amount of heat that's being generated and to really kind of help to ensure that you have that higher level of stability, um, my recommendation actually is to bump this out, not too much, uh, but to about 60 seconds. I find that then this covers almost about 90% of cases extremely uh, well in terms of the overall reliability and stability. But of course, if you really want to, you could go ahead and really kick this up to 30 minutes or an hour. Now keep in mind that if you make that adjustment, that adjustment is gonna be per each increment. So, you know, if you're going up, you know, a few hundred uh, megahertz or even more than that, you could be literally talking about hours, uh, you know, that your system would be going through the stress test. But that might be a great option, especially if you wanna do this right before you go to bed, and that when you wake up, you will have this fully stress tested system with that maximum level overclock in place. Now, the next step is going to be making an adjustment to the CPU ratio stability. And this is essentially how the system determines um, the algorithm that is being applied and essentially what we approximate as being fully stable. And so, um, you know, in most situations, normal is gonna be very, very good in terms of giving you a high level of system stability. And this works great for general usage. So, you know, uh, opening up general applications, browsing the internet, looking at photos, playing back music, um, playing games. Uh, if you're a more demanding user and you're really kind of going through heavy, uh, heavy multi-core multi-thread uh, games or applications, you're all tapping back and forth, you're running concurrent applications, things along those lines, or you just want the highest level of system stability, I recommend you drop this down to encoding stability. And that helps to really make sure that while your uh, CPU frequency might be limited a little bit, you're gonna get the highest level of stability in terms of your system. Now, there is a, a kind of a, an extreme option, which for the vast majority of users is not gonna be required that it's enabled, and that's gonna be support for AVX instruction sets. AVX is a specialized instruction set that you'll find within some advanced content creation applications. It's not currently utilized in any games. Um, it will put significantly more stress and produce quite a bit more heat. In this respect, generally, would also significantly usually reduce your maximum CPU overclock. So um, we generally don't recommend it for the vast majority of users, but if you're somebody that cares absolutely about the highest level stability and you are doing uh, content creation workflows, you're using applications like Adobe Creative Cloud, things along those lines, then you can definitely check that off so that you can make sure to get the best balance in terms of stability, utilization of those instruction sets, uh, while still being able to get, see what you can get out in terms of overclocking your CPU. Now, last but not least, we've got three additional options right here, and these are essentially just for tailoring your overclock really simply and easily. Um, one is gonna be essentially, if you wanted to define how much additional voltage is being supplied directly to the CPU during the overclock process, you could go ahead and do, do that, and it will automatically apply essentially that additional voltage that you've gone ahead and defined. If not, it will automatically use values that we've defined and that we find to be safe and reliable and effective. Um, the next option is that if you're kind of really not knowledgeable about anything, and the only thing that kind of makes sense to you is kind of try to maybe target a CPU frequency, you can actually just select your target frequency. And once you've gone ahead and selected the target frequency, um, the system will attempt to scale up to that maximum target frequency. Now we don't know, of course, if the system will be able to reach that, but we'll do our best to get the closest to that value or to get to that value. And the last option I think is really cool and actually very complicated in terms of really trying to figure out how you can dial in these values if you were trying to do it manually. And that's gonna be temperature-based overclocking. You can very easily just go ahead and define a target temperature such as let's say 80 degrees. And what this will do is it will track the actual CPU frequency the amount of voltage that's being supplied, the amount of a wattage, uh, and then uh, correspondingly the heat output. And essentially once your system reaches 
a certain frequency that under load produces 80 degrees, that's where it'll stop the overclock. So this is a really great balance of really being able to kind of maximize total efficiency, acoustics for the system, and really keeping a, a targeted level in terms of the temperature performance. So really, really cool stuff. So um, by default, you don't have to define any of these options. Like I said, you can just literally click the start button and you're good to go. Now, we don't need to worry about these other parameters right here, uh, but we, for the just kind of sake of going through this as, as quickly as possible, we're just going to deselect these right here. And from there, all we're going to need to do is click the start button and you're going to click yes, and then it will automatically reboot the system. Uh, once that reboot occurs, it will boot back up into the operating system and we'll see where it goes. Okay, so our system has gone ahead and now rebooted and it's actually still loading in the background. And in a moment, it's actually going to load the uh, five-way optimization system suite. And we can see that it's gone ahead and popped up on the screen and it's currently letting us know that we've now gone ahead and uh, initialized our four gigahertz preset, which where we talked about initially in those baseline options that are available in the auto tuning suite. Now at this point, if you were satisfied with this four gigahertz overclock, you could literally just click the stop button and you would be good to go. That's it, you're set, you're complete. And and you've gone ahead and already taken advantage of the unlocked nature of the CPU. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this is already about a 300 megahertz overclock that you have uh, from the maximum all core frequency at pure stock uh, for the highest end CPU that's available on the Ryzen 2 platform. So that's approximately 3.7 gigahertz, uh, 400. So that's 300 uh, megahertz overclock. Uh, giving us four gigahertz. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're essentially just going to allow it to continue forward and we're going to see essentially what it's able to go ahead and continue to overclock towards. Now keep in mind that every CPU is going to be different. Uh, even if you match the same exact configuration that we have in terms of the CPU, the cooler, the power supply, every CPU is going to be a little bit different in terms of what its maximum frequency is. Now, while again, this is operating in terms of the operating system, this is fully happening in real time and it's interfacing uh, using the firmware. So it's essentially, this is talking directly to the motherboard on a hardware level and making the adjustments for CPU ratio, the multiplier, uh, the voltage, and then tracking all that information. So if we go ahead and open up our task manager here, we are going to be able to see essentially our system actively working in real time. So uh, you'll see right here that the CPU is under 100% load across all of the threads. And then if we switch over to memory, we can also see that we're actively utilizing all our memory. So the system is fully being stress tested. Now it's gone ahead already kicked up uh, 25 megahertz in terms of our overclock. So we're just a little bit over four gigahertz. And we can see that's been applied across all eight of the active cores. Uh, if you want to be able to check out some of the information for your system, you can see directly here the temperature. And this is a uh, temperature that's being directly read from the die of the CPU. Uh, we then have the voltage that's being applied. Now, we automatically will um, just incrementally increase the voltage. Uh, this is based on our own internal analysis of a large amount of Ryzen 2 based processors. And we do this very safely and efficiently and effectively. Um, you don't have to worry about this. This is all happening in real time for you. You can also see a real time representation of how much power is being drawn. And this helps to kind of uh, corroborate and is in alignment with the actual total heat that's output um, by the actual CPU as it's getting overclocked. Now, as it continues to pass uh, the stress testing, it will continue to incrementally increase the CPU frequency. And this will continue on essentially until it reaches a point of instability. Um, at that point, the system will crash, which is entirely normal. And the great thing is that the application is tracking all this information and storing it in real time. So once it essentially reaches a point of instability, it will go back and say, hey, what was the last frequency that I was stable at? It will actually be a little bit more conservative, even that last stable frequency, it'll load that up and then that will actually be our final preset based overclock and again while this is being executed in software if at that stage you decided to fully remove the asv3 system utility you would actually still fully be left with the system overclock as it is dialed it in directly into the uefi bios just like if you were manually doing this the great thing is that day one when you get your system built you don't have to worry about jumping into forums watching uh, videos uh, getting all the ins and outs of how to manually tweak every single parameter essentially you can just go through uh, make a couple adjustments within the auto tuning suite and you can very easily and effectively overclock your system. So we can see right here now we're almost at 4.1 gigahertz and we're gonna to continue to allow the auto tuning suite to essentially go through and see what the maximum level of overclocking is going to be on our specific system.
So here we can see the system has now reached actually 4.2 gigahertz and any moment it's probably gonna crash here. So we're gonna go ahead and wait for that crash to occur and it's gonna go ahead and reboot and we're gonna see what the finalized outcome of our automatic overclock is going to be. Our system has gone ahead and crashed and now it's gone ahead and rebooted back in and in a moment we're essentially going to be prompted again with the auto tuning suite utility and it's going to essentially finalize the end portion of the overclock where as I noted it's essentially going to reference the last previous stable value and then from there roll that back a little bit more conservatively to ensure that we have a frequency that's going to be stable and reliable for the long term and essentially we have finalized the auto overclocking process. So we can see right here uh, we've gone ahead and got the utility to pop up. We're gonna wait for it to go ahead and essentially finalize some last settings that it's coordinating with the motherboard. And it's gone ahead and successfully reached a 4.2 gigahertz overclock. So this is pretty awesome. Again, when we take a look at that baseline frequency at pure stock across all cores is 3.7 gigahertz. And now we've reached essentially a 4.2 gigahertz overclock. So that is essentially 500 megahertz overclock that we were able to as simply execute literally uh, just by clicking a button within the AI Suite 3 uh, five-way optimization system utility. So at this point, you're pretty much all good to go. I would generally recommend a couple of quick things. Uh, one, you could go ahead and download our free utility, which is ROG Real Bench. This is a great system benchmark, which will allow you to fully check your system in terms of the performance. and. It's a uh, multi-threaded, so you can go ahead and see that there's a specific increase in performance. And so generally what I recommend is to run this prior uh, to your overclocking pursuit. So 100% when your system is at stock and then go ahead and run it again once your system is overclocked so you can make sure that you're seeing an actual system increase. Um, this is also sensitive to memory. Now keep in mind that fiber optimization does not overclock our memory. So if we do currently check our actually memory frequency, we're gonna find that it's still right now set to its baseline 2133. So your system performance could go ahead and go even further if you decide to manually go into the UEFI and uh, set the corresponding XMP profile for your memory. And we'll cover that in more in depth in the actual advanced overclocking guide, but you can see right here we're running at 2133, but all the way around, very simple and easy way to overclock our system. Now, last but not least, for some users that still wanna go through an additional level of stress testing to verify the system stability, a great option is going to be, again, using that RG Real Bench uh, stress test option. So you can click on that button, go ahead and define the length of the stress test. I generally recommend 30 minutes to an hour, although you can go ahead and set up to eight hours. You can go ahead and allocate how much memory you also want to be stress tested. I'd recommend at least going with eight gigabytes in terms of that. And once you do that, you can go ahead and click the start button and it will report back to you if the system has gone ahead and passed. If the system do, does go ahead and crash, you may want to manually go back into the UEFI and maybe slightly bump up the voltage or slightly bring down the frequency. But all the way around, that wraps up our auto overclocking process. So that wraps up our quick overclocking walkthrough. Hopefully you found this useful in terms of being able to go ahead and get the most out of your ASUS X470 series motherboard. Now that being noted, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure to keep it tuned here to this ASUS YouTube channel and make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as go ahead and give us a thumbs up as well as go ahead and leave us any comments, concerns, or feedback in the comment section below. You can also make sure to go ahead and check out our wide range of social media links uh, for Facebook, for Twitter, Instagram, and so much more in the links uh, in the description. Now, for those of you that are interested in a more nuts and bolts walkthrough that includes a, essentially a tutorial for overclocking uh, that is based utilizing exclusive the UEFI, make sure to keep it tuned here to the ASUS North America YouTube channel for some of that content coming in the not too distant future. So as always, take care, take it easy, and enjoy the rest of your day.